Hello there, it's Carrie Rhodes here with CarrieStamps.com. I wanted to thank you so much for purchasing the January stamp set of the month tutorial featuring the Let's Toast stamp set by Lawn Fawn. I love these projects and I'm very excited to share them with you. I also wanted to let you know that there is a PDF tutorial that I emailed you that goes along with this video. So you can print that out and use it as kind of a guide to follow along, especially if you want to recreate these projects. I've included the measurements in the PDF so you can easily cut the paper and go ahead and make these. So I hope that you do, and if you do, I would love to see them. I also wanted to let you know, in the PDF, there is a printout of all the products that I used. And also, if you want to view them online, there is a QR code in that PDF. All you need to do is open the camera on your phone and act like you're going to take a picture of it, and a link should pop up where you can click that and then view all the products online. So I look forward to hearing from you, and I would love to know what you think of the projects. And for now, I think we should get stamping. All right, so here's our first card. I love this card because it uses the add-on die so that the toast pops up out of the toaster. So cute. All right, so I'm going to stamp my sentiments first. I'm using the Lawn Fawn Jet Black pad that's Copic friendly and stamping them onto whipped cream cardstock by Fun Stampers Journey. And I noticed the butter dish didn't come out very good, so I'm going to re-stamp that. And you could do all these cards without the Misty, but if you have a stamp positioning tool, it's going to come in handy um, for a few things on this tutorial on all these cards. All right, I'm mounting the toaster on a block because we're going to stamp that a separate time because we're going to be paper piecing them together. So this stamp here is the Cover a Card Gingham Background Stamp by Impression Obsession, and I'm inking that with bubblegum ink and just stamping a little scrap of the whipped cream cardstock. This is what I'm going to be stamping the toaster on to paper piece it together. So we'll use some black licorice ink to ink that up. And then you just want to be careful to stamp this straight, um, unless you wanted your gingham pattern to be um, more diagonal, you could do that. And then we're just going to cut out the top part of the toaster. So I'm cutting away like the little button pieces, the little feet pieces, but I am keeping the top of the toaster. And I find Lawn Fawn's stamp sets to be easy to cut out because their stamped line is a little bit thicker. All right, so we'll set that aside and do some Copic coloring. I have the lids of the markers I'm using there on the screen. Really, for all of these, I'm using three, sometimes two, um, shades of one color to do with them and um, bring in that shading. So for this one, I'm using cool grays. C O or C0, C2, and C4. I do have the Copic Classics here, which have a more of like a bullet tip, which I actually really enjoy for small images. It was kind of a mistake that I got the Classics and was a little disappointed when they came and it wasn't the brush tip, but um, they have worked out okay for me. So I just wanted to point that out in case you also have the classics or you've run across them. Um, they have the bullet tip on one end and a chisel tip on the other end, but the bullet tip is nice for smaller things. For bigger areas, not so much. It's a little bit harder to blend. For the butter, I am using also three shades of yellow. I'm using Y00, Y02, and Y06. Just three different shades to um, have some highlights and then be able to blend them together with the um, lightest color. And I love this little tiny pat of butter. So super cute. And then I just go back and add a little bit more of the darkest color to highlight it. Now for the butter dish, I am using R20, R20. It's a blush color. And it's such a small image, I'm actually only using one color. So I color the whole butter dish, and then I just color over the top of it in a few spots to give it some highlighting. 
For the toast, I am using three different browns, kind of tan colors. Um, I want the middle of the toast to be a little bit light because we're going to be stamping a face on it. So I outline the toast with E25, which is um, a brown color. The center of the toast is two different kind of tan colors, E31 and E34. Actually, E34 is called toast, so that's kind of a no-brainer. So I just filled in the toast with the E31, and then I'm um, going back and outlining it with the E34. And then you see me here putting in the little dots. I just really like this look for the toast. Um, kind of fades the color in, and to soften those, I just go back over it with that lighter color. It kind of looks here like I'm coloring over them and you can't see them, but you are able to see them. They're just really subtle. All right, so we're going to go ahead and die cut these. I love that there's dies for almost everything in this set, and I like to tape them down. The Lawn Fawn dies fit snugly around the image, and I like that. It takes up away like the guesswork, and they cut out beautifully. So there we have them all die cut. And now we can paper piece this cute gingham right over the top of our toaster. I'm just going to use some liquid glue for that and line it up. And we have a super cute gingham toaster. I love it. So we just want to make sure that that is dry. And then we're going to add a little heart to this. Actually, the bigger of the two hearts from this stamp set. So I'm using the Misty because... I want to stamp this in the same color ink as I stamped the gingham, that bubblegum ink. So what I'm going to do is just stamp it repeatedly. If you don't have a Misty, you could just choose a darker color of pink to stamp this heart. Um, I'm getting that effect by inking this up and stamping it multiple times. I stamped it three times and then it's going to show up really well. Uh, now we're going to take the medium face with the kind of blinking eyes and stamp that right on the toast with black ink, black licorice. And you could use the Misty for this next part too. I'm going to add some cheeks. I thought about using the Misty here. They were just so small. <laughs> I just decided I would go ahead and use my block. So I'm using that bubblegum ink. And I like to stamp them really close to the eyes. And then I just stamped it two times. It was so light. Even if I didn't line it up perfect, it worked out. Here I'm using the Journey Rectangle die set, using the second to the largest rectangle to cut out the center of that piece because we're going to cover it up anyway. So I'm going to use that center piece instead of throwing it away to cut out the pieces we need for the pull tab. So we're going to cut these two pieces. It doesn't matter that that die is longer than the paper. We're going to end up trimming off some excess from it anyway. I'm also going to send you a link to the Lawn Fawn video on how to work this pull tab die set so that um, you can familiarize yourself with it. It's just the basics of how to make this pull tab die work. So we're going to cut the notch or the opening in the toaster. Now this cuts actually an opening where the die that comes with the stamp set or that matches the stamp set, it just cuts a slit. It doesn't remove any paper. So we're going to go ahead and cut also that top piece that is the arrow. So it kind of shows people where to pull the tab out. And we're cutting that from printed paper. And I'll tell you about that in a minute. We're also got the opening there you can see it cuts out an opening and that works better for using the pull tab. All right this is the piece of paper that we're using as our card front. So I'm going to show you right here you could cut this tab out of the paper just like this. Run it through like that. Or you could go ahead and mount it to the background. So these are two different shades of yellow. We have pineapple smoothie and banana cream. I just like those two shades that are so similar. So you could go ahead and mount it, and then once you get it centered, which I had a little trouble, <laughs> we can cut out that notch for the pull tab. 
So we get it on there and I'm lining up. So it's only going to cut where the notch is. That bar is actually just so you can nestle it up against your cardstock. So I actually nestled it up against the lighter cardstock. And when we run that through, normally it would cut out that piece. But since we have it mounted on the other piece, you need to snip to remove it. Now, if you did not, if you cut this before you mounted it, you would just have to mount that darker yellow piece and snip away the excess border. All right, so this is that printed paper I was telling you about. It's from the From the Heart printed paper stack by FSJ. I like that it also had the different shades of yellow there. So that's kind of our countertop that our toaster's going to sit on. I'm going to set that about where I want it and mark the top of the toaster with my pencil. And we're going to go back to the pull tab die set and we're going to use that straight piece. This is what is going to cut the opening to insert the pull tab. So you want to line it up with the top of that line that you made with your pencil. And we go ahead and die cut that and there's our opening. So now we're going to fold the pull tab. You're just going to fold it forward and then back on both sides. Crease that with your crease tool and then you're going to bring the ends together and insert them through the slot we made. So just pinch them and put them right through that slot. And this piece is the perfect size for the toast. So we're going to add some adhesive right to those tabs and the toast will cover that entirely. I'm going to hold that down and erase my pencil mark. All right, he's good to go. You can see there it's kind of loose and wiggly. So we have this piece right here that holds it in place. So you want to fold it in thirds and then on the back we're going to put some double stick tape. Just make sure when you're adhering this that that smaller tab is on your left hand side. Okay, my toast is all the way down and I'm going to put this underneath the pull tab and press that to my card base once I have the pull tab straight. And we fold the middle piece over and the littlest tab is where we put the glue. So we've created a channel for the pull tab. This way it doesn't wiggle around as much. But see how long it is? We're just going to snip off that extra once the toast is in the all the way down position. All right, so here's that extra piece of printed paper that we die cut, and we're gonna put that at the top of the pull tab, and it has a little arrow showing people to pull up. All right, let's get our toaster on here. We're gonna need some foam squares to mount this with. We're gonna put them like in the four corners because we want to leave a channel there for the toast to move up and down in. So you see I tried to move one of mine and then it wasn't sticky anymore so I had to get a new one. All right, so we've got our fo four foam squares and once the backings are removed, we just need to thread the toast through the opening in the toaster. And I had to pick this up and, and <laughs> look at it from my point of view a little bit better. So sorry it went off camera. And then just set your toaster right where you want it. It should cover that opening, the slider opening. And there you have it. And now I'm just going to arrange my little pieces that I've die cut and figure out where my sentiment's going to go based on where I'm placing all the things. So I put it in my Misty and we're going to stamp with black popping up to say. And then these little pieces here, the butter and the knife, I'm going to put on with glue, except for the butter dish. I did use a foam square on that. And then the pad of butter, I used two glue dots, just giving it a tiny bit of dimension. And then we're going to put I love you, my butter half, with a baby heart in the center. I sped this one up really fast because it took me a while 
to get those three little pieces lined up how I wanted them. So once I got it where I wanted, I inked it up. Oh, see, I had to play with it again <laughs> using my grid. I'm going to ink it up with that bubblegum ink. And I'm using my Misty because I want to ink it up several times because I'm using the same color ink as my paper. So it gives me that darker image. And then I'm going to glue that on the bottom here and just trim off my excess. And then I'm going to stamp the little tiny heart with the pineapple smoothie ink. I did that with the toast up so that I could get it snuggled in around him. I'm going to mount this to my cardstock with some foam mounting tape. And I like to use a lot. <laughs> I really just like a sturdy card. So that's why I'm using a bunch here. And you can use however much you like, but it is best to have this popped up. It makes the mechanism for sliding the toast up and down move more freely when it's popped up versus if it was glued straight down to the card. So I'm using plenty of foam mounting tape here. Um, this is the foam mounting tape by 3M. And it just works good. I love a sturdy card, so you'll see me use it a few more times in today's video. You can even have your husband pick it up for you when he's at Home Depot. <laughs> or you can order it from Amazon. It's really good. Really good stuff. And here we go. There's our toaster card. Isn't it cute? I love that toast popping up and down. All right, card number two is my avocado card. I'm in love with this card, you guys. I can't wait to show you how I made the sliced avocado. All right, here we go. First, we're gonna stamp a background. I'm using um, fresh forest paper from FSJ as well as ink to just randomly stamp the avocado, creating my own background. And I love avocado so much, and so you just have to make a background with it. I'm so happy to have an avocado stamp. So cute. So just fill that in, and then I felt like the open spaces needed a little something. So I brought back that tiny little baby heart and just filled in some of those open spaces using the same color of ink. And it made for a nice, quick background. So we will set that aside, and we're going to bring in some pear cardstock and lemongrass ink and use that same gingham background stamp. I like to use my grid here to make sure my stamp is straight, and that makes it easier to get the gingham straight on my paper. And I do like to use a scratch piece of paper to keep my hands clean. I always hold the paper with one side with one hand and rub with the other. And then we have a nice, fun background. I love these different shades of green for the avocado. So the heart I'm using is from the Decorative Hearts die set. I just cut it out of that gingham paper. I'm going to save that negative piece for something else. And this one, I just felt like it needed a little dimension. So I'm going to sponge the edges with a little bit of that same lemongrass color. And that just helps draw your eye into the center. go. Clean off my work surface. I love this glass mat by Tim Holtz. It's amazing. All right, let's do some stamping. So we're going to need to stamp our avocado. And I'm using the jet black ink again from Lawn Fawn. So we can do our Copic coloring. We're going to stamp the knife. And I found when I stamped it the first time, didn't get the best impression, so I stamped it again. And then we're gonna stamp the toast. And again, I realized, um, not so great. So I pulled out a scratch piece of paper. This is why I like using the Misty, but yeah, scratch piece of paper works too. And then we're going to bring out the Copics. So for the avocado, I am using YG01 right here. I love this color, it's amazing. And then for my medium color, I'm using YG17, YG17. 
And then I'm going to blend those together using the um, lighter color again, YG01. It's amazing. And then I'm going to go back and do that kind of polka dot technique that I did on the toast. And then I blend those out again. So the dots are with the medium color and then blend it out with the light. Now for the dark edge, I chose a really dark green. It's G29. And then I wanted to give that pitted effect to the skin of the avocado, so I brought in E49, a really dark earth tone brown color. All right, let's move on to the avocado slices. So I just drew an avocado-like shape, and I'm coloring it in with that YG01 and outlining it with the medium color YG17 and pretty much coloring it just like I did with the stamped image, only there's no stamped image there. And so this is the piece that I will end up using for my avocado slices. Again, I'm doing those little polka dots, and then I'll come back and blend it out. And then I decided I should probably check on the size and make sure I colored a big enough avocado. So I brought in my dye and realized I do need to make it a little bit bigger. So I just added a little bit to one side and blended it together using the same two colors. There we have it. Pretty good. All right, so then we'll go ahead and color the other pieces. And I'm using the same exact markers here for the knife as I did on the last card. And then um, blend them together. Then I decided maybe I need it a little bit darker, so I actually brought in um, Cool Gray number six, just to add a little bit darker shade because this card is a little bit darker, whereas the last card was, you know, the light yellows. So I just made it a shade darker. We're doing the same exact thing with the toast. You will see on this toast, I did make it a little bit darker than I did on the last one. We're not putting a face on this one. So I wanted to make it a little bit more toasty. Some people like their toast a little darker, right? So I am coloring it in a little bit more with that toast color and adding some darker dots with that darker color. A lot of this is going to be covered up anyway with the avocado, but I just liked that, those darker colors showing through. And then we will Go ahead and die cut all these pieces. Oh, I realized I did not color my avocado pit. So I'm actually using the same exact colors I used for the toast. And then we have a really nice shaded avocado pit. And then I'm gonna bring in the tiniest face with the little blinking eyes and stamp him a little face with black ink. And then we'll die cut the pieces. And then I'll come back and die cut that avocado coloring with the die. All right, so then I am going to cut the avocado and notice there's some white. So I just took that medium green and colored the edge. And then I'm going to cut this into four slices with my scissors and we'll glue them right onto the toast. I gave them a little bit of space in between and went ahead and glued them in the order in which I cut them. I felt that one was too big, so I trimmed some off. I wanted some of my toast showing. Now we're going to go ahead and stamp our sentiment. You're the avocado to my toast. And I'm going to use my Misty here. Sorry, it's off camera for a second. I'm There we go treating it with anti-static tool so my white embossing powder will only stick to my stamped image. At least that's the hope, right? So I'm using my scissors to kind of gently nudge these and get them in place. They're super sticky stamps, so they often will stick to you. I try to use my finger instead of my fingernail, and that helps too. So since I was using clear ink, I went ahead and inked that and stamped it two times and coating it with white embossing powder by FSJ. Cleaning off any little stray pieces. And then we'll heat that up 
with a heat gun. This um, glass mat is made with tempered glass, so it can withstand your heat gun being near it. I don't really lay stuff on it to emboss it, but near it I feel fine. So I'm going to cut out some tiny little hearts. This is the Bunch of Hearts die set. I only need three, but I like when I have a scrap that's big enough, I'll cut extras and then I just save them for a future project. I love these hearts. They're so cute. You could also use that negative piece. I haven't yet. I've only used the die cut hearts, but I plan to. I'll use them, that negative piece. So we're going to go ahead and glue our hand stamp background down. Always put a little love in your cards. And we're going to have a border all the way around this, about a fourth of an inch. And then the heart we'll put on with some foam squares. Um, if you are faint of heart, you might want to look away at how many foam squares I use here. <laughs> I do love my foam squares. And then that will go right in the center of the card. We're going to put our saying on. But I like to just kind of position things so I don't just willy-nilly put the saying on and then run out of room for something else. So I'm putting the foam squares on the back, but just laying things down. For the knife, I'm going to take one of the small foam squares and cut it in half. And then when I mount them on the knife, I'm going to put them closer to one side than the other because the knife goes over the top of the avocado and the toast a tiny bit. Lay the hearts out and then we can go ahead and start gluing stuff down. So I'm going to snip off the ends of the sentiment and then I decided to make it a little bit sturdier. Instead of glue I was going to use my um, white liner tape and I, I need it to not go all the way to the ends because it hangs off the heart a little bit. And then I can stick that down and press it in place. And then I think we're ready to go and stick our avocado down and our toast. And then you'll see the knife here overlaps a little bit, just a touch. And then I used my liquid glue to put on the three little hearts. Aren't they cute? So this red color that I'm using of cardstock is Cranberry Bliss by FSJ. And the card base is Oatmeal Cookie. I'm using Oatmeal Cookie a lot for today's cards. I love this card. I'm so glad I made it and I just have to figure out who to give it to. So now on to the shaker card. This one might be my favorite because those sprinkles inside are actual sprinkles plus Pop-Tarts, like you can't go wrong with that. So I have the outside in stitched scalloped rectangle die set from Lawn Fawn. Look at these little dies, they look just like Pop-Tarts. So we're gonna be using that to create the opening for the shaker card. Back in with my gingham stamp and I'm just cleaning off the green I used before with the FSJ cleaner. And then we're gonna ink this up with white ink. This is um, whipped cream ink and I'm just getting a nice good coating there. And then oatmeal cookie cardstock and in comes my scratch paper so I don't get ink all over me. Although it tends to happen anyway but the paper helps a little bit. And we'll get a nice image here that we're just gonna set aside to let it dry because of that craft ink. You could heat set it, but we've got time. So we're gonna go ahead and stamp our images. And I am using the Misty, so I can restamp them if I need to. We just need the toaster and the Pop-Tart. We're gonna stamp multiple Pop-Tarts because we're gonna use three on this card. And using my Copic Friendly ink. And then I'm gonna move the Pop-Tart over and you'll see here, I realize, ah, I got it too close to the edge of the paper. So I scoot it in and try again. And I went ahead and double stamped the toaster even though I didn't really need to. And then here I think, oh, I'm just gonna lay this on the paper and pick it up, but it had a little ink on it and I moved it. So I don't know if I recommend that. <laughs> 
but I did get it in the same spot as my ink shadow that time. Okay, so now in one of the open spaces, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the largest heart from the set. And that's gonna be with bubblegum ink. And I decided I better move these other stamps out of the way. I don't need them. I'm just gonna make my paper, stick to my paper. So I got them out of the way. And then we're gonna go ahead and color. So for my toaster, I'm using two reds and a pink. And those colors are R27 and R46. And then I'm using my blush marker to blend them out. That's R20. So I outlined it with the darkest. I'm doing most of my coloring with the medium, the R27, and then using my blush to blend them. It also really lightens them, which I like. It kind of gives it that look of shine. So I'm just going to do layers of the R27 and the R20 until I get the look that I want. A little more shading, a little more blending, and we're going to call it good. And then on my Pop-Tarts, I'm using a combination of all these colors to make a pink Pop-Tart, a red Pop-Tart, and then I will bring in a couple other pinks for my other Pop-Tart. So we've got a light pink, a dark pink, and a red. Now, the one that I'm coloring right now ends up being much more red than the one in my sample, but that's okay. I just decided to go with it. And then we're going to do the pink Pop-Tart. So I just have three different shades of pink here, but I'm gonna color the whole thing in with the R20. I think this is the one I'm actually gonna leave. Yeah, I just did the R20. Colored the whole thing and then did the middle darker. That's gonna be the one that comes up out of the toaster. But now you can see I'm adding RV11 and RV13 to make my brighter pink. Bring back the blush and blend those two colors together. And then we're gonna do some more stamping. We're gonna add our cute things. Oh wait, no, we're gonna do the toaster bottom with those same cool grays. I am using the darker um, set because it pops against this red you can see in the sample, I um, colored more red than I did on the one that I'm coloring right now. And I kind of like it with more silver on there. The other thing I realized once I was editing this video, I never stamped the three little lines on the toaster. If you look at the toaster in the sample in the top left corner, it has those three little lines that indicate like kind of a shine. And that's a stamp in this stamp set, and I just totally forgot to even add that. So now I'm using the two E31 and E34 to do the crusts of my Pop-Tarts. And they're going to be nice and toasty and yummy. And then we've got some details to stamp on all of these. We have faces and hearts and things like that, sprinkles. So I'm using the Cranberry Bliss ink and stamping red sprinkles on my lightest pink Pop-Tart and a couple of those tiny hearts. I'm not worried about the bottom of the Pop-Tart too much because it's gonna be stuck in the toaster. And then we'll do the little faces with black. Switching out my stamps. All right, so on the tiny heart, we're doing the tiniest winking face. And then on the red pop tart, we're doing the medium smiley face. And then we've got the biggest smile for the toaster. There we go. And then we're gonna do that bigger heart with the Cranberry Bliss on the medium 
pink Pop-Tart. Now it's time to die cut everything out. Just line those up and tape them down and we'll get them cut. I love this purple tape. It's by ThermoWeb. It's called Purple Tape. <laughs> but it has low tack so um, you don't have to worry about it peeling off your paper once you die cut it. Now there's no die for the little heart so we do have to fussy cut that. And I just move my paper with my left hand and try to hold my scissors still. And I left a little white border around the edge. Now we need to use the die to cut the opening for our shaker. Now in relation to my sample card and the card I'm making now, I decided I would try moving that rectangle up a little bit higher instead of centering it. And then that piece that we cut out of the middle, we're gonna save for our peanut butter and jelly card. All right, on this one, we're going to sponge that opening just to make it stand out a little bit more. I like those scallops a lot, so we're just gonna use the oatmeal cookie, which is the same color as the paper. And here I really inked up one corner more than I wanted, so I just went back and inked the rest of it up a little bit more, making it darker. The ink is gonna show up darker here than when the card is all dry. It'll lighten up a little bit. Clean off the work surface. And then we're going to add a piece of window sheet. Oh, before we add the window sheet, we're gonna do our stamping. Yeah, don't forget to do this part. I jumped ahead on you. So I just taped that in place. Um, and then I'm gonna lay my saying that's gonna be on the inside of the card, the inside of the shaker with all my tart. And I just counted down what scallop it was in so I could um, line it up there with the scallop. Pick that up with my block and then I'm gonna stamp it with Cranberry Bliss. And then I was worried I didn't have enough ink. <laughs> so I inked it again and stamped it right in that window. It was a little stressful, I'm not gonna lie, but it all worked out good. You gotta use the, the lines on your block or the lines on your grid to help line it up. So now we'll go ahead and put the window sheet on. I'm using some tape roller to just line that square rectangle opening. And my window sheet is cut just a little bit smaller than the cardstock. Press that in place. And then we'll bring back in, yeah, the foam mounting tape. So for this, so that my elements move around more freely, I'm doubling it up. So I just measured it on the side of my card, doubled it up, and then it was a tiny bit long, so I snipped off the end and stick it down to my card. This is the perfect size to go around this rectangle. So we'll repeat that for the other side, eyeballing the measurement there. And this one ends up being the perfect size. So I don't snip off the end, which means it's one continuous piece of backing paper. So you'll see this one has its backing removed already. Oh well. And then we'll do a top and a bottom. You just wanna make sure that you are creating a reservoir for these shaker bits so they're not going to escape. You don't want to have any little openings. So make a pretty tight frame here to hold them in. And you want your foam mounting tape to be pretty close to your window, to that opening. Otherwise your shaker bits will fall down and not be seen, especially since we are putting elements over part of the window. Because it's such a big window and because I am covering up part of the window, I'm gonna use quite a few shaker elements. Now you see me using my anti-static tool here. That's because the edge of that adhesive can be sticky and my shaker elements can stick to it. So I just try to rub that onto the side there. So here's my sprinkles. They're Valentine Sprinkles by Wilton. I got them last year. They're teeny tiny little hearts. They're adorable. Um, I think you could find any little heart sprinkles at the grocery store, the craft store, 
wherever you shop, you could find some cute sprinkles. And they don't even have to be heart-shaped. Now I'm just lining up my sentiment in that second scallop spot. And there we have it. There's my shaker card. See, I'm just tickled with that. I don't even need anything else. It's so cute. All right, so before we go ahead and mount these, we're gonna bring back the die set and take that curved piece and we're gonna die cut the slit to put our Pop-Tart in. So remember I was telling you before, the add-on die set cuts an opening and this just cuts a slit. See, it's just a slit, nothing is removed. And we can insert our little pieces. I'm gonna flip that over and put a dot of glue on the back to hold that down and then a dot on the back of my heart. Cute. That's gonna go there. I decided since this is gonna hang over quite a bit of the window, I'm gonna use some double-sided tape to stick that down. This is Easy Glide by FSJ. Press that down. And then we'll just go ahead and do glue. Glue is my favorite adhesive. I love liquid glue for my projects. That's just the Tombow liquid glue. I bought several of these and so I always have glue on hand. And then just tuck them in. That's why I like the liquid glue because I'm able to tuck things in uh, while it's still wet. All right, for our sentiment, we're gonna do the I Love You. Again, using the Cranberry Bliss cardstock and embossing it with white. Use my anti-static tool. Ink up your stamp really well, especially if you're not using the Misty. Dip that in the white powder. And then we can go ahead and heat that up with the tool, my heat tool. All right, and then I like to remove any of that excess anti-static with a clean cloth. I'm gonna snip the end in a little flag shape and then I'm gonna shorten this up, just snip it off. And when I put this on the card, I'm gonna use some smaller double-sided tape, 1 8 of an inch, because it's gonna go on the window sheet. And I'm gonna line that up with the dotted line around that rectangle. So now it says, I love you with all my tart. All right, I've got my handheld heart punch here by FSJ. I love this punch. And I'm just gonna add three little hearts from the bubblegum cardstock, which is the same color as the background of our shaker. This is like the most Valentine looking card of all the cards. Even though I feel you could use any of them for Valentine's, you could also use them for other occasions. You're the avocado to my toast. Happy birthday. <laughs> or just somebody you're thinking of. Somebody that's far away you don't see very often. These would be great cards for that. So my little eye was a little light. So I just took my black jelly roll pen and went over the eyes to help them pop out more. And then we will mount it to our card. A little heart in the middle, and then we've got a nice red border around the edge. There we have it. Shake, shake, shake. All right, we are on to our last card. You're the peanut butter to my jelly. Isn't it cute? This one is also a slider, but it's a little heart that pops up. Okay, so let's get started by stamping our images. We're gonna stamp two pieces of the bread. See, this time it's bread, it's not toast, right? So when we color this, I'm gonna color it pretty light because I want it to be like bread. We're also gonna stamp our sentiment, you are the peanut butter to my jelly. We're gonna be using Lavender Fusion ink, which is the only color of purple I ink that I used for this card. But again, I used multiple shades of purple um, for the cardstock. 
So we have that. And then bring back in that gingham background. There's my lavender fusion. I'm going to ink that up and stamp it onto my paper. And this is the lightest of the three purples that I'm using, and I just love how it looks with that lavender ink. Look how pretty this comes out. Isn't that gorgeous? I love it. So that lightest paper that I just used was pretty amethyst. And then the lavender fusion on top. So now we're just coloring in the toast. I'm only using the lightest of the two toast colors that I've been using, so E31 and E34. The E34 is the edge and then the middle. I'm, I don't need to go all the way in because we're gonna stamp the center and I am adding a few of those little dots in there as well. And then we're gonna go ahead and stamp the center. I decided it would be best to do it in my Misty. Then I could stamp it multiple times to really get that dark peanut butter look. So to stamp the peanut butter, I'm going to be using Haystack ink. Make sure it's nice and clean first. I felt like it might have a little ink on it. So the Haystack ink is the color I chose for the peanut butter. It definitely needed to be stamped multiple times. And in the end, I ended up stamping this one four times. So I really wanted it to be dark. I felt like the sample maybe wasn't as dark as I wanted, so I tried to make this one a little bit darker. And I don't mind stamping it four times because I know when it dries it will be a little bit lighter. So I rotated the little stamp so that the kind of the spread of the jelly wasn't the exact same direction as the spread of the peanut butter. And then I'm using that same lavender fusion for my jelly. And I went ahead and inked it up multiple times to make it really dark and vibrant. And then they just need their little faces. So for the jelly, I did the winky face. This is the, the medium size faces. It's like both eyes are blinking. Got little eyelashes, it's very cute. And then for the peanut butter, I did the smiley face. Cute. So we can go ahead and die cut those. And then we will figure out where we're gonna put our slider. So I'm gonna lay my sentiment down and my rectangle piece down where I want them. Come in with my pencil and mark the top of that rectangle. And that's where I'm going to die cut that opening in my card with the slider piece. So that straight piece, we're lining up with the top of my pencil mark. Okay, and then I'm also going to go ahead and die cut this at the same time. I can center the center of that loop with the top of my slider opening. And we'll just save that sentiment for when we're done. We die cut that super fast. And here we go. We've got our opening. And then we've got the notch in the top. Okay, I already die cut the slider pieces. I die cut them the same color as my card base, which is Lavender Fusion. But the pull tab, the little arrow, and the heart, I die cut from a darker purple, Grape Fusion. So I went ahead and treated my heart with the anti-static tool, and we'll do the same clear ink and white powder embossing. I left the tape on this one to help me hold on to it. Kind of liked that. Buff off any of that anti-static powder. Remember, we're going to fold in and fold back for this slider tab. Now, the heart is a little bit different shape than the toast. So when you lay it on there, some of 
the tab is going to show. Unless you glued it up high, you could glue it up a little higher. But just to be safe, I went ahead and cut the corners of them off so they didn't show. Insert them through the slot. I always move it all the way down when I'm working. And then I can glue my heart right on there. But not putting glue towards the bottom because it's going to stick out at the bottom. But that bottom is never going to show, so I didn't worry about snipping the bottom off. I got a little excited about moving the pull tab before the glue was dry. Erase my pencil mark. And then I'm going to snip, snip this off. You know, making sure your heart is all the way down before you snip it. And then we can add our arrow piece. Again, this is cut from Grape Fusion cardstock. Slide that on and press it in place. All right, then we have our tab that we need to help secure it. Put our tape on the back. It's kind of like a channel. It creates a channel for the slider. So somehow, as much as I tried, I did end up getting this crooked. I think it was right there when I was doing that. I didn't notice till later, but it ends up sliding just fine. So I guess it just makes me sad. I like things straight, but it'll be okay. So we're gonna glue our sentiment down at the bottom. Get it straight. And then we're gonna bring back in that scalloped rectangle and get our toast, or actually bread, popped up onto it. If you guys follow me, you may um, remember I made a very similar card to this last year with a um, Sunday brunch stamp set that FSJ had out. And so I was super tickled that this one actually had the sentiment, you're the peanut butter to my jelly, because I had printed it off on my computer to make this kind of card. I absolutely love it because my daughter actually has a t-shirt that says this and it has a little bread on it. So I love it, super cute. All right, so we just put three more hearts on there and those are with the darkest purple, the grape fusion. And then again, we're gonna only put the foam squares in the corners leaving that opening for the heart to move up and down. So before you press this down really hard, like I just did, make sure that you can see all of the word I love you because I ended up having to pick this up and scoot it down. And all was well, it didn't ruin anything. Just double check that. All right, we bring back in the foam mounting tape. I tore it there, but I felt later I really like to cut it better. My scissors are adhesive resistant and so I don't really worry about getting tape-like things stuck to them. And then this is going to get popped right up onto that card base that is Lavender Fusion. Same color as the ink I'd used throughout the card. And there we have it. We're going to add a little bit of glaze to these because I wanted that peanut butter and jelly to look as if it was dimensional on there. So I'm going to coat all of the jelly with the glaze. Now this is gonna take a little bit of time to dry, but it is so worth it to have it be raised up and shiny. Just cover that, and then I decided to also cover the three little hearts. Speaking of the three little hearts, I did try to go ahead and stamp those with the baby heart in this set, but it didn't show up good on the white stamped background. So. That's why I went ahead and punched them out. So there we have it, our peanut butter and jelly card. So fun. I hope that you guys have enjoyed these cards today. Let's take another quick little peek at each of them. If you have any questions about these cards and making them, um, and they're not answered in the PDF or this video, I'm always here to help you. If you wanna know about the products I used, Make sure and check the back of your PDF and happy stamping.